separated from the mainland by a narrow channel and protected from the immense Indian Ocean by a series of long coral reefs lies the Lamu Archipelago. This area along Kenya's northern coast is both unique in its incredible marine life and ancient traditions. From the vast open ocean, filled with playful marine mammals, to the expansive mangrove forests, man and nature have been coexisting for centuries. Striving to keep the balance between these two important pillars of the local ecosystem is the Lamu Marine Conservation Trust. For over 20 years, the Trust has been working towards a sustainable interaction between the islanders and their unique marine environment. The archipelago is a prime habitat for endangered sea turtles. The main two being the green sea turtle and this smaller hawksbill. Triggered by a sharp decline in turtle numbers due to the demand for their meat and eggs, the Trust started its Turtle Protection Scheme. Along the sandy beaches favoured by nesting mothers, wardens patrol looking for new nests. Through education on conservation, turtle poachers became wardens, putting their knowledge of turtle behaviour to a good cause. By giving the baby turtles a little helping hand, it secures a safe path to the sea, increasing their chances of survival. Dodging predators and overcoming obstacles, the baby turtles make a dash for the open ocean. Once past these breaking waves, their little understood swim to adulthood begins. Roughly one in a thousand make it to maturity. Where they then can breed and pass on their genes to the future generations of turtles. To understand the needs of mature turtles and to keep an eye on turtle numbers, the Trust has a tagging program. Fishermen that accidentally catch turtles in their nets are given incentives to bring in the live turtles 
where they are then tagged before being released back into the sea. Since its inception, there has been a 70% reduction in hatchling mortality and a 50% increase in the population of foraging turtles in the archipelago. Sharing these coastal waters with the turtles are artisanal fishermen who rely on the coral reefs and seagrass beds to provide food and a source of income for their families. Free diving down, they scour the ocean floor in search of something they can eat or sell. It can often be a lot of hard work for very little reward. Eventually though, persistence pays off. With the target in sight, the fisherman makes his move. Unfortunately, this is a fight the octopus can't win. The octopus is then passed up to the boat, before the fisherman then dives down deeper in search of far more lucrative prey. He's in luck. Lobster can be sold for a high price, and therefore are a sought-after prey. Although it may seem cruel, this kind of fishing is sustainable and has been going on for centuries. However, due to modern and often destructive fishing techniques, these once teeming waters have been exploited, their fish stocks reduced and coral reefs damaged, making it so much harder for artisanal fishermen to feed their families and make a living. Further north from the turtle hatching beach lies the tiny island of Mandatoto. Fringed by coral reefs, this was the area chosen by the Lamu Marine Conservation Trust to set up the Mandatoto Marine Conservancy. A section of reef, important as a fish nursery and for its abundance of coral, was set aside as a no-take zone. This community-run conservancy was vital for the preservation of the ecosystem to ensure fish had a safe environment to breed and mature, with the idea that the spill-off would improve the fishing for the local community around the conservancy. It also created a tourist attraction, providing another source of income for local boat operators who organized snorkeling trips. The proceeds from the entry fees go directly to the community which used to fish the area. The success of this project can be seen in the abundance and diversity of fish and coral species. From their success along the coastline of Kenya, these types of community-run marine conservancies are the future of marine conservation, as they provide an income for the community, protect the marine environment, and by doing so, improve the fishing and the livelihoods of that community.
Lying inland from the coral reefs and sandy beaches lies a large mangrove forest. This area is of great importance for both marine life and the local communities. With over 70% of Kenya's mangrove forest located in the Lamu archipelago, it's vital to conserve this ecosystem, not only for the residents of Lamu, but the entire country as a whole. These forests act as a huge carbon sink, absorbing carbon dioxide and creating the oxygen we breathe. Not only do the roots secure the ground, creating a natural barrier from the heavy Indian Ocean storms, but they also act as an underwater filter, cleaning out toxins and contaminants. Newly hatched fish take refuge amongst the intertwined root systems, hiding from predators. Going deeper into the mangrove forest, we find a community of fishermen who rely on the productivity of this region. Living on stilted huts above the high tide mark, they mend and prepare their nets. When the tide is right, they head out in search of their prey. The first method they use requires a narrow creek and the outgoing tide. Once the net is set, it's a waiting game. At low tide, it's just a matter of pushing their prey toward the net. It may seem like dirty work, but the reward is worth it. In a final team effort, they bring up a good catch of tiger prawns. The second method is far more backbreaking. Taking their boat further up the creek in an area where there have been sightings of crocodiles and hippos, the fishermen jump into the thick, deep mud. They painstakingly drag their net upstream for a distance before pulling it ashore to see what they caught. After all their hard work, the bulk of their catch is often leaves, but interspersed amongst these leaves are the prized jumbo prawns. Seemingly oblivious to the ongoings of the fishermen, fiddler crabs scurry around on the mud, eating, looking for mates, and battling for dominance. However, their bigger cousins, the mangrove crab, don't have it so easy. They need to find a safe hiding place where the crab fishermen can't get them. All it takes is a simple line with a small fish attached to one end. Once the line goes tight, it's game over for the crab. However, today is this crab's lucky day. Another important thing to consider is that a lot of the wood for the region's prized sailing dows come from these mangrove forests. So really, the community and the environment here are so linked that the destruction of the mangroves would negatively impact the lives of the people who call this archipelago home. In a time of such great worldwide loss of culture and nature, this archipelago stands out as an area somewhat untouched by the ravages of time.
the unique mix of ancient culture and traditions, coupled with the diverse ecosystems full of such colorful and unique marine life, make this place truly special. However, this may not be the case in the future. Like in many areas around the world, there is the ever-present threat of habitat destruction, loss of marine life due to unsustainable fishing, and the loss of the culture which relies on those environments. Lamu stands on the brink of great change, and how that change will affect the environment comes down to the people who inhabit these islands. In this day and age, modernization and destruction, be it environmental or cultural, do not have to go hand in hand. Through working directly with the communities that depend on this environment, the role of the Lamu Marine Conservation Trust is extremely important in conserving this vital ecosystem and preserving the balance between man and nature. By bringing these important issues to the forefront, but also educating the islanders, and more importantly, their children, on the importance of conservation and sustainability, the Trust is helping to bring about a positive change by a movement of the people. The success of the Trust so far is because it's a grassroots initiative led by people from the Lamu Archipelago. This not only empowers the people of the archipelago, but preserves this incredible environment. Not only for now, but for the future generations.